today we are starting chapter 5 which is about analytic trigonometry. The first section deals with some fundamental identities and working through some problems dealing with those fundamental identities. Your substitute teacher should have handed you a yellow sheet that has a bunch of different trigonometric identities listed on it. For today, you aren't going to need to know every single one of these on this sheet. You should, as you're looking at it, be familiar with some of the ones on that sheet now. The ones that you should know are the Pythagorean identities, probably not all three of them, but the first one for sure. The reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, the cofunction identities, and the even odd identities. Those identities are the fundamental identities of trigonometry. The ones below that we will get to in the coming weeks in this chapter. But for now, like I said, you only need to know those those five. And you will be using those five in order to solve or solve some problems and answer some questions. So now in looking at this, some of this is going to be similar to the things that you ended in chapter four. In this first question here, it says tangent of x equals seven over 24, and secant of x is equal to a negative 25 over 24. And we want to find the other four exact ratios. Well, because of tangent is being 7 over 24, if you use the reciprocal identity, you would know then that cotangent of x equals 24 over 7. And since secant of x is negative 25 over 24, cosine of x is equal to a negative 24 over 25. Now then we have to figure out the other two which would be sine and cosecant. And you can use a fundamental identity to go to figure those out, or you can just refer to your friend, call this side x. Since we know that tangent is seven over 24, this side is seven, that side is 24. And so then the hypotenuse is going to be seven squared plus 24 squared, and the square root of that, which is 25. And that stands to reason because we know that cosine is 24 over 25, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So now that we know all of these things, we can figure out what sine of x is. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, because cosine is negative and tangent is positive, tangent is sine over cosine, so if cosine is negative, sine must be negative as well in order for tangent to be positive. And then if sine is a negative 7 over 25, cosecant is a negative 25 over 7. Our second example says the tangent of theta is equal to 2 and sine of theta is less than zero. Now one thing before we start this question, this theta, you may not just see a tangent of theta equal to, you may see tangent of x equal to, you may see tangent of alpha equals to, tangent of beta equals to, tangent of that, which I think is phi, and could be any other Greek symbol in here or a variable. They're all the same thing. You're just trying to find an angle. And sometimes you may have two different angles in a problem, so they have to give them two different symbols. So now, going to this problem, we know tangent of theta is equal to 2, so that means cotangent of theta equals 1 half because of the reciprocal identity. Now and then to figure out the rest of them, you can refer to your friend, call this theta. And since tangent is 2, this side would be 2 and that side would be 1. And so our triangle is not drawn very properly, so let's make it look more geometrically correct. And put this like so. Now let's call that theta and move this one here. To find the hypotenuse then, it would be 2 squared plus 1 squared, square root of that, which is the square root of 5. Then you can find the rest of the ratios. Sine then of theta would be 2 over the square root of 5, 
which simplifies to 2 square root of 5 over 5. Now, it says that sine has to be less than 0, so therefore it is negative. And if sine is that, cosecant of theta is going to be the square root of 5 over 2, and it is also negative. Then for cosine, it is 1 over the square root of 5, which simplifies to the square root of 5 over 5. And since sine is negative and tangent is positive, cosine must also be negative. And if cosine is 1 over the square root of 5, then secant of theta is the square root of 5 over 1, or just the square root of 5. And again, it is going to be negative because sine was negative and tangent was positive. Moving on to the next question. In this next area, these are some questions out of your book. You have to simplify this to match one of the things that they give you in the book in the book as far as choices that you can match this to. So you just have to use your identities to change this to something different. And so from your cofunction identity, sine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as cosine of x. And cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine of x. And then because of the quotient identities, cosine over sine is the same as cotangent of x. And then you have to look to see, is that one of the options that we have to choose from? And it is, it is letter C. If when you do one of these, you get something and it's not an option of the one six that you have to choose from, then you need to try to do something else. I don't think that'll be happen too much, but it might. All right, moving on to the next section of problems. Here we have cosine squared of pi over 2 minus x over cosine of x. Now, so that you understand this, this is actually saying cosine of pi over 2 minus x, and that whole thing is squared. When the squared is in here, it's just not the cosine that's squared, it's the whole thing that's squared. So we can take cosine of pi over 2 minus x and turn it into sine of x. So it becomes sine squared of x. And now then, cosine of x stays as cosine of x. Sine squared, anytime you have something squared, it means you're multiplying it by itself. So you have sine of x times sine of x, still over cosine of x. And sine of x and cosine of x turns into tangent of x times sine of x. And then if you look at your possibilities to choose from, you will see that letter D is the one you're going to need. And so we've now simplified that. Now you will get into things where you're just going to have to simplify it to a single term. This is not a single term because there's two different things here. So tangent squared stays as tangent squared. Secant squared is the same as 1 over cosine squared of theta. And now here's why I tell you that you need to understand how to work with fractions, because you're going to get problems in this section and in this whole chapter dealing with fractional things, but they're not going to be numbers, so your calculator is going to be useless. So you have to understand the concepts behind what you need to do with fractions. And in this case, because you are dividing by this fraction, that is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And then from your properties of tangent, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. So tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared 
times cosine squared over 1. And now before multiplying, the cosine squareds can go away, and you are left with sine squared of theta. And it's that easy. Moving on to our next next example, it's cotangent of pi over 2 minus x times cosine of x. So from your cofunction co identities, cotangent of pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine of x. No, it's not. Wrong one. It is tangent of x times cosine of x. And what do we know about tangent? It is the same as sine of x over cosine of x and times cosine of x over 1. So this is very similar to the problem we just got done with. And now we can get rid of the cosines and we're left with sine of x. Now, in 50, it says verify the identity. In this case, you know what you have to get to, and we have to take this side and make it look like it. So cosecant of pi over 2 minus theta is the same as secant of theta, and tangent of a negative theta is the same as a negative tangent theta. Now, usually it's better to work with sines and cosines, so let's change all of this. Secant is the same as 1 over cosine of theta. And tangent is the same as sine of theta over cosine of theta. And now, because you have a fraction divided by a fraction, that is the same as saying 1 over cosine theta times a negative cosine theta over sine theta. And again, you can get rid of the cosines, and you're left with a negative 1 over sine theta. And 1 over sine is the same as cosecant, so now you have a negative cosecant theta, which is what your goal was to get to. And there you have verified that identity. There will be more of those coming in the next two or three sections. All right, this next one deals with having to factor things. And here we need to have it grouped by two terms and two terms because it's four and it's not easy to factor unless you group it. So in the first two terms, you can divide out a secant squared of x from both of these two things. When you divide it out of this, you get secant of x minus 1. These two, if you look at this, it's a negative secant x plus 1, which is just the opposite of what we have here. So let's take a negative 1 out of those two things, and then you would get secant of x minus 1. Now we have this term and that term, and they both have a secant of x minus 1 in them. And when you divide that out of each of them, you would get secant squared of x minus 1. And if you look at your trigonometric identities, the Pythagorean one, it says 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Well, if you move the 1 to that side, then you have tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1 which is what that is. And so we can turn, turn that into tangent squared of x, and then times secant of x minus 1. Now, why are we doing this? Well, you're going to end up having to verify some identities later on, and you may need to do some factoring like this to verify it. And finally, we will go to this problem, where you're going to simplify to a single term again. Here we are adding fractions, and in order to add fractions, you need a common denominator, which is cosine of x and 1 plus sine of x. And it's like we have a 3 here and a 4 there, so you just multiply the two things together. 
you need to multiply this thing by cosine of x in order to get this whole thing. So we also have to multiply the numerator by that, and cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. Over on this side, we have cosine of x, so we have to multiply by 1 plus cosine of x, or no, 1 plus sine of x. And when you multiply this and this together, you are going to get 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared of x, because you're multiplying all of that together. Then, from your properties, moving things around, if you take the cosine squared and you add sine squared, your Pythagorean identities, the first one there is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So then we know that this plus this is 1. And now 1 and 1 makes 2. So now we have 2 plus 2 sine of x over cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And here's where some factoring comes into play again. This numerator, we can divide a 2 out and get 1 plus sine of x. And here we have cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And then we can divide out the 1 plus sine of x's, and we are left with 2 over cosine of x, which is the same as saying 2 secant x. Now your substitute should be handing out the assignment sheets, and you can start working on the first section of Chapter 5. If you did not finish the test last Friday, then you can work on that probably on Wednesday to finish it up.